intel that I have is more military. I, I think that when it finally does go down, I've always thought this, that there would be a big military presence. So I, I've done a, my own work in trying to develop contacts within the intelligence industry. And uh, last week, all the major troop movements were mobilized. Um, that They have put the big helicopters, the big Apaches up last few nights. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is not in a scary way. I don't want to scare anyone. I just there's an old saying that if you um, want peace, you have to prepare to go to war. <laughs> so the way I think the Republic looks at this, and the Chinese and the Russians, which are all kind of Pentagon, which are all kind of coordinating this, is they're concerned with anything that might stop the flow of this after you know. 14, 15, 16 years of getting it set up. Uh, the last time we were supposed to have a major transfer of wealth like this, we got 9-11. So <clears throat> um, they're very cautious. So to see them make major troop movements, to see them make major artillery movements is um, encouraging for guys like me who have been waiting for it for a long time. Plus, Either Iko or Yosef had made a comment about troop movements earlier in the call, and it brought to mind something I saw yesterday afternoon about between 1 and 2 p.m. on Interstate 85 southbound. My sister and I were heading down to Spartanburg. We saw a small convoy of six military vehicles, four to six, and made note of it. And when that was said earlier on, I'm like, wait a minute. The Black Hawk helicopters, I saw three helicopters in a triangular formation last night coming home. Saw the military convoy yesterday. Bingo, two plus two. There's the verification. Well, thank Don't you, ma'am. Don't know if that helps anybody, but I saw it. Interstate 85 southbound between 1 and 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Eastern Time. Don't know where they were going, but I do know there was a Humvee and a couple of real small, real short squat vehicles in the convoy. Over here in the Space Coast area, which you know where I'm located, right, we have had an excessive amount of these absolutely giant, I would call them troop carrier helicopters, in sets of five flying here. They're black and totally unmarked. And someone I know questioned some military people lately. They wouldn't tell us who they were or what they were doing, except about the only thing we got out of the person was they're here to protect us. So, very interesting. Things that are going on, exactly what Yosef was talking about. So, okay, that, thank, that makes thank you, sense. Ma'am. That makes sense. It they are does. here to protect us. That's it. I'm glad. I'm proud. Jerry? Yes? I just got a text from somebody in your neck of the woods that says we have had dual rotor military helicopters over Dallas all day today and yesterday. Okay, well, Wells Fargo is servicing as the U.S. Treasury right now. It's the actual banking mechanism for the New Republic Treasury. The New Republic Treasury is based out of Reno. The, the treasurer is based out of Reno. This is the admiral who's actually not an admiral. He's a former naval subcommander. Right. Okay, and he is the paymaster for the United States because he had his finger on the on the button of a nuclear weapon the Chinese have trusted him with the finger on the button of the gold back currency. To Ico's point uh, about us being exchanging into fiat, we we haven't been on a fiat currency since April of 2015. So we're long past the days of fiat, long past. Um, The reason they're issuing new currency is because the United States dollar was uh, the, the major dependent reserve currency for over 180 nations. So they, they physically had to print new money because otherwise it would be well way too confusing for most nations to suddenly not have the U.S. dollar. 
the reason I asked about that is because we know that the dinar, the sovereign rate for that is like 80 bucks. So I was wondering right. what that might be for the Zim. Oh, well, you're not going to get the sovereign rate. I mean, those those numbers are staggering. We have a, a – I can say this now. We have a client that has over $8 quintillion of dinar in another country. Okay? $8 quintillion. That's a lot. It's stupid, right? I mean, it's absurd. First of all, who would buy that much? Second of all, the guy's trying to negotiate for an above market rate on eight quintillion dollars. <laughs> so, I, I didn't realize they had printed that much. I mean, I knew that they overprinted it, but I didn't realize no, it was that much. one country. That's one country. So the problems that they've had with the dinar are staggering compared to what they have to the Zim. The Zim is a very controllable number for them. It's not a big number for them. It's not. And because they've wrapped it into the the, the, the yuan, it will, in essence, get sold back out to the international community as the Chinese yuan. So if they take it in, let's say you get them at a dollar, and that's your number, and you redeem your Zim for a buck. Well, that Zim converts into Chinese yuan. They take that Chinese yuan and sell it back to the world community at $6.50. They've made a 550 arbitrage. Do you feel bad for China for that? No. No. So why not ask for what it's really worth? Because if China, remember, China is getting all the natural reserve minerals, gold, oil, um, the palladium in, in Zimbabwe, you can literally rake it off the dirt, off the topsoil. It's so plentiful. The Chinese, the Russians, the world really needs Central Africa, the, the moist kind of region, the rainforest region of Africa to move the world forward in technology and energy. So they have to have it. And this is our one chance to kind of say, well, I've got a piece of what you want. And I'm Miracle Queen and I'm I'm here and I you know and I I want I want what's coming to me. And you could ask. And this is the one time in your life that you'll be able to seize the day and carpe diem it. And I just want everybody to claim that power. The U.S. dollar collapsed in 2012. It went to international court. They extended it for a year, and then they went to international court. And really, it didn't really resolve until 2014. But, but Ica, we've been off fiat dollars. Um, in fact, in August, I think 2013, in uh, Rancho Mirage, California, the United States surrendered to their largest creditor, China. And uh, there's pictures of uh, Xi Jinping and President Obama doing a peaceful transition of the United States. You know, I'm a sovereign guy. I don't listen to anybody's calls. I don't. I'm not. I'm not beholden to any bank. I'm not. Uh, you know, nobody asked me to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I tr- and I feel people deserve to know. They deserve to know the truth. Um. And the banks have been kind of using some of the intel sources. Not that that it's a bad thing or a negative thing, but they've been trying to keep the peace and keep it calm and keep expectations down which bankers always do, you know, and kind of give you the lowest rate possible and the international rate and um, lower interest rates and things like that. So I just hope that maybe I've been a counterbalance to their high end. Um, I do want to add one point about the Zim. And hopefully I'm talking slow enough for the uh, mod or the uh, transcribers, but... You know, I came out and I told you guys that the Zim was a bond. Um, by order of the elders, they have to settle all bonds in the United States. Um, so when you go to redemption, just know that you hold with you a, a very valuable instrument, probably more valuable than just a regular piece of currency, and you do have leverage. The rates, I don't know, you know, we we had heard rates, you know, Months ago, it was in the teens, and then it moved up to the 20s, and then the 30s, and then we heard it was in the 40s, and now we've heard it's in the 60s, right? Um, what I want to offer is that you jumped up about 20 times almost overnight. And um, and the reason being is because <clears throat> that is the rate they always intended it to come out at anyway. 
they just didn't want to give you that rate to start with. They wanted to tear you, your expectations up so that when you did get the real rate, you'd be so thrilled and excited um, you wouldn't really want to negotiate, which is a pretty good negotiating strategy. Start low and look like you're settling, and all of a sudden your, your client's happy and you close the deal. Well, it's a great number. I'm not, I'm not discouraging it at all. I'm just... I want you to look at what the number is. It's 0.65. And if you move the decimal point over one place to 6.5, you would have the exact same number as the current value of the Chinese Wuhan. Interesting, huh? And if you look at Zimbabwe's um, currency, they're, they're the currency that they have de de paid from the dollar in the basket of currencies, um, that were causing them so much problems and they converted over to the Chinese yuan, right, as their reserve currency for the country. So when, you're, when you hold Zen, you're actually on the back screens, on the gold back screens, you're holding Chinese yuan. And I put a pictorial out of the Zen to the yuan to the gold to the um, new rainbow currencies that are coming out. It's all the same currency, guys. It's all gold back. Imagine going to a paint store and seeing all the beautiful colors and all the chips, you know, and you can select any color you want, and you go, you go pick it out. Those are all the currencies of the world. And you go pick it out, and you turn it in, and they mix a white can of paint <laughs> for every color. That's what the currencies are. They're all one white can of paint with multiple colors. They're all gold back. So if you're looking for an MCA account or you're looking for a non-interest bearing account, which are normally really good hedges, I don't want to say it's irrelevant because it's not. Diversification is always the best strategy for protecting your wealth. But because the entire banking system is being reset and, and switched over, all the banks are functioning on the same computer system. They're all functioning on the same value system. They're all functioning on a gold back palette, if you will, of colors. So for you to stress or get agitated or anxious over how to best manage this, don't. They've thought it through for you. They've already provided you a safe vehicle to just to go exchange. Don't get too worked up about it. If you want other currencies, because they're pretty, or you just want to diversify, go knock your socks off. <laughs> but but they're, they're guaranteeing every currency. They're guaranteeing it the same, because it's all gold back. So I just wanted to offer that. Um, I'm not saying you're going to get the same price as the Chinese yuan for your Zim. I'm just, when you go in, I want everybody to have confidence that what they have is of extreme value on the world stage, you have either by gift or by education with what you guys are doing, you have earned the right to turn it in and claim the prize. And they have done a very good job of protecting you both in the banking system and militarily so that you have a smooth and safe experience when you exchange, not just at the time of redemption, but well after it as well. So I just want to offer that peace of mind um, that if we're at redemption, we're going through the process, we're, we're, we're safe. 